Hi, I'm Lisa, pro makeup artist, and today I'm going to show you how to really create balance and symmetry in eyebrows. Because let me tell you, no brows are identical twins. See? They're very different. I'm just going to look in my mirror, but I'm still very much with you. So this brow is way more arched than this brow. This brow kind of has a little bit of a soft curve. And before I do anything with my brows, I will always get a little spoolie brush and just brush through them to unify them. So you can really pull out the shape, because sometimes you can fix things. And when I say fix things, I don't mean obviously fix things, because you can't make hair grow where hair isn't. But you can move hair directionally, very much like when you do your hair. You're almost changing the parting of things. And obviously, say like with these hairs, these hairs, how an anatomy of a brow works, let's, let's rewind back. How an anatomy of a brow works is these hairs generally grow in a more upward direction. Then they start to slant and then go down. They get a bit lazy. So it's quite actually hard to brush brows down but can you see how just by brushing that down here and lifting up there that's given them a bit more of an angle so already just by brushing them you're manipulating the shape to make them a little bit more uniform and for me I find that my eyebrow preference is this slightly more a mixture of the two <laughs> Not going to be easy, am I? It's a mixture of the two. I don't like it um, too, like, ho, 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 Elvis. Um, but I prefer the slight softness of this, but I do like the slight lift as well that you do get in this. So I'm going to show you those techniques. So yeah, what I'm doing first is just brushing them. And with this tail, so this tail is a better example of a well-behaved tail. It almost, it's like a chunky triangle, isn't it? It comes out and to a nice thin point. While this tail here, there's a little bit of a disconnection and a gap. Like if you were to imagine an invisible line, there's a negative and very minimal, and I'm talking millimeters, gaps because my hairs are tiny. So that is telling me I almost want to fill that in to make it a bit more balanced or yeah, filled in really nicely. So it's a nice full looking brow. And my brows, they're quite a fine hair. Like you can still see quite a lot of skin behind the brow. They're not very coarse and dense and thick. Because you will do different things for different brow density. Because if your brows are very dense and heavy and almost look quite, not bushy, but very full. You'll know what I mean if you have them. Then if you add a tiny bit of product, it instantly looks very, very heavy. So you do slightly different things there. So let me know if that's something you want me to explore. I feel like I've got like a cat fur on me or something. So... What we want to do is create a bit more balance. So in order to do that, we want to make this a little bit more arched. So those brow hairs at the moment are sort of coming down here. So we want to raise them a little bit to give us a little mapping. And can you see how that's instantly perked it up? And then I find it's on, it's adding a bit on the tops which I'll do in a minute. And it's really hard, because sometimes you can be so tempted to pluck so much away to create the shape, but that doesn't always help you. Sometimes it's better to have a bit of a slightly, not messier, but like gappier shape that you can fill in and guide. And then with the, and what's quite good is turning your head underneath. So you can see this, again, comes a little bit higher. This side is higher than this side. So I don't want to add 
make this any lower than what it is but what I can do is add what am I saying I'm like not making any sense I don't want to add too much thickness to lower this side down so I can add a tiny bit more um, slight a very acute thickness to this one to make the shapes a bit more pronounced like even because brows just grow differently and there's a real simple science to brows which is by getting a pencil and I'll probably get this is quite a thick but maybe I'll just use it because you can see it quite easily so these are the kind of traditional proportions of beauty and what you look to do create a brow so you want your brow to start at the edge of your nostril you don't want it to start here <laughs> that will proportionally enhance you and your face and then you want the tail of your brow to end so you same compass point there which that brow does brilliant and if it doesn't you can use <coughs> your pencil or your brow product to just pull it down a little bit more and then for your arch your arch should be across from your pupil so that's the point there so sometimes you can dot little subtle marker points so let's check the other brow and see what that says okay that starts at a good point that's just a little bit shy so that could do with a little bit more <laughs> and then that's my so that sits at the kind of right point and obviously these are guides you can do your brows however you want but I'm simply sharing sharing is caring I've recently got this hourglass uh, pencil and I'm loving it this is the hourglass dark brunette brow sculpting pencil and what I love is that it's got the pencil on one side and it's quite a chunky pencil but that doesn't mean you need to be scared of it at all because you can do a lot with it it's very much like a powder based product meaning it looks really soft and then you've got the little spoolie so in terms of brow products out there there are so many on the market the strongest look and effect is probably like the brow pomades that almost come in like the little <coughs> I'm just gonna have a sip of water it's probably gonna be like the same pomades what was I saying yeah that's the strongest effect it's very you can draw like microbladed, blided, I'm Australian now, Ash. Microbladed kind of effect brows. Oh, I'm just crossing my legs and hitting things, and that is very very strong. Then you've got the what have you got then? You've got the brow pens, which I'm a huge fan of. And to me, if you have a very very, if you're very lacking in hairs on your brows you can really fill them in and sometimes if you don't like wash them off fully they can last a few days to give you a bit of a guide so you're not spending all that time redrawing your brows every day but that's a personal thing um so that's really good it is more on the advanced and technical side then we go to the brow pencils like the really really thin ones not like this so they also allow you to draw they can look quite strong um and sort of liney and i think what's really important I'll, I'll show you and explain a few tips and tricks that make the brow read so the goal of what i'm trying to achieve here is a well groomed and balanced symmetrical ish looking brow that's it i'm not looking to create a very heavy or laminated or whatever brow i'm respecting the brow shape and that it is and sort of going from there i'm not trying to change it drastically and then you've got traditional powders which i think are a really lovely 
it's probably what I started off using initially. Um, you can obviously wet them down to get a bit more of that pen-like effect depending on what brush you use. I generally like an angle brush and just sort of, it's really good to fill in and powder is very good to act like a shadow. So if you've got a super heavy brow, that's gonna be like the softest general texture you can use. <clears throat> and these kind of straddle between the thin pencil and the powder because of the shape of the nib. They're like a little triangle. I don't think I understood these for quite some time. Come on camera. Hello. Oh, there he is. So they're a little triangle shape. So you can get that fine point still, but you can also build quite easily. So it's quite good for like getting the tail shape and stuff like that. So let's let's get into the brow action, shall we? So I start off, I think it's quite good to if you tilt your brow down, can you see, you can see a bit more of the shape here. So you can see that actually when my brow's down, there's like a bit of a dip here in my brow. Obviously I can use my brush to brush them up, but I know that that might move a bit through the day. So I might want to address that. Um, so I tend to actually start by framing the brow by drawing a line a really light line I'm doing like feather light strokes can you see how that's just made that a little bit more powerful but what happens is when I tilt my head that looks okay but some points you can see a bit of a gap and then you can tilt your head and start to kind of like feather and fill in a little bit more and then and then what I'm really looking at doing is I'm looking at both sides because I I don't want them, again, to look identical, but I'd like them to look really, really similar to balance them out a bit more. So sometimes that means underdrawing and overdrawing on areas to create that illusion of symmetry. And what I'm noticing that I've not done here is I've sort of curved down and followed the shape. Well, see this point, if I hold this here, see that's like a tiny bit higher. So I'm just gonna straighten out a little bit what's good about this is it's very easy to correct if you go wrong <clears throat> and what you've got to think directionally is if you move in a, like a more upward motion that's going to curve your line <clears throat> so sorry curve your line a bit more easily well if you go in a sort of backward motion that creates more straight strokes so really think about what you want to achieve and the lines you're doing it to do that. And that's the same with like doing your lips and everything beyond that. Even like tattooists doing it, do that sort of same technique with drawing lines in skin. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at the bottom of that. And here I can see there's like a few gaps in the hair. I'm very lightly again stroking to just fill those bad boys in. <clears throat> There's also a little gap here. I'm just filling that in again. And now doing the tail, I'm using that thinner side. and sort of connecting those two areas. And I remember that the length of that was pretty good. I'm gonna stop there for the meantime. I'm gonna take another sip of water. And again, great way to check. It's amazing what a difference those two kind of, te you know, Filling in here a bit more in here, just transform that brow. It, I mean, it looks a bit heavy, but I'm gonna soften that in a minute. But it's given it a bit more. So what I want to do now is address a bit more of that arch situation. So I'm simply going to square off. So I'm working in a backwards shape so I create a bit of a straighter line 
and once I've got it I can come down just to create that a little bit more of an arch so here's the hard part trying to do the other one and I was really naughty there I started with my stronger side and really you should start with your weaker side which is this side but I started with this side because this is the brow I was going to be changing and manipulating and adding to a little bit more this side's going to be a bit of an underdrawing situation so I am drawing that straight line but more in the brow hair rather than slightly above it so you can see there that just gives it a bit more definition do that and as a makeup artist this is so much easier to do on someone else's face than your own because you're so familiar with your own face it can be like really difficult to make yourself up i'm just gonna move something so the cat can get by i think he wants to he's like put himself in the corner there you go mate get out if you want <clears throat> and then same below But this side is naturally a bit cleaner so I'm trying not to do too much because I don't want to sort of make this brow massive and then have to do a lot. Hi Ludo! He's just come and sat with us. Are we going to see your ears in a minute? No, he's just literally sat here. So he does this weird thing where I'm working. I'll show you on my hands. Can you see my hands are like scratched? Yeah. I'll be working, he'll be sat next to me stroking happy, happy, happy. And then he'll just start attacking me for absolutely no reason. What's that about? Is it because I stopped stroking you? I don't really know. Oh, Ludo. Right. So, we know here that the tail is a bit of a opportunity to fix. And it's really about moving your head, adjusting yourself. So you don't want to enhance this. And this side's probably easier for me because my hand comes down really nice and straight. And doing the bottom a little bit more. And what you can do is just use the edge of your nail just to really sharpen and I lengthened that a little bit because I knew from my kind of measuring earlier that I needed to just adding a bit of straightness there because I'm feeling like it's a bit of a dip. Those aren't looking too bad. Now I'm just going to use the edge of my nail just to kind of really. You can also use like a flat angle brush or you can use a q tip, just make sure it's well packed. Because sometimes they kind of really unravel and they make your job a lot more difficult. So I'm just sort of checking everything. And I feel like I need to add a little bit more just so i'm looking to see that the kind of textures are matching the opacity this brow feels a little bit this brow feels a little bit dark so i'm going to add and then you can use that flatter side to kind of fill from the bottom up just in areas where you want a bit more coverage and i'm just going to do the fronts because the fronts of mine are very Faded and soft, which is fine, but I have a few like grey hairs and stuff in there. And now we're going to use the spoolie just to soften. So you can see, can you see when I'm using it? I'm using a little bit of force. 
and this is just going to soften the powder up a little bit more so you see less of it and it's just merging and marrying everything in see the difference it just of Ludo but I'm going to take a picture of Ludo for you to show you because it's so funny he's just sat there like absolutely zero zero F's given <laughs> what, what a lad I'm just going to soften that top bit a little bit more there yeah I'm really happy with that what do you think Tell me what brow products you like to use, what kind of cocktail and combination. And I think this is focusing on kind of filling brow and creating symmetry. And obviously I would then now lock this in with a brow gel or product. But a brow just makes you look that much more powerful. And what I did forget to mention is colour. So the tone of products you're looking to use in brows, obviously unless you are a redhead or but even if you are a redhead, these things still work. It depends on the look that you want to achieve, but for a natural looking brow to generally your hair color. So for brunette, I don't want to go darker because darker will look heavier. They'll look like more of a feature sat on your face rather than like a part of it. And I want everything to look very soft. If you are blonde or kind of very fair haired, strawberry blonde, you will, you can take it a few notches darker. But for both those things, generally speaking, you really want to go for more of a cooler toned product. A very, like, either nothing-y, kind of looking grey product. Like this pencil is like an ash kind of brown. There is like a teeny bit of warmth to it, but it's predominantly on that cooler side. And if you're not sure, what you can do is kind of smudge the product. And as you smudge it, you generally see a bit more of a tone coming through. So whether it's cooler, so you'll either see a bit more of a yellow or a green come through or red or orange. And obviously if you're a redhead, like totally use an orange based color. But also saying that what you, what, if, depending on what you want to achieve like if you're not looking to necessarily add hair but just define the brow you want to create a bit of shadow so using a gray shadow underneath the brow will work really well and on black skin i would really opt for like a very dark black skin you would really opt for a very dark brown you want to be careful with grays because obviously they can go very ashy but you do want to go for that kind of rich dark tone kind of give you that shape so i hope you've enjoyed this kind of very specific video about brows and it was funny because i went to an event this week and i was like oh my god who does your brows like tell me about it and they're like the ceo of this brand and i was like this company i was like well i do them myself <laughs> um but yeah i did used to get them threaded and i did really like getting them threaded i'm very sensitive about having my brows done like when someone else doesn't want like sneezing i'm streaming i'm crying i'm very emotional um it's not good it's not pretty and yeah i was like literally i pluck them so that's kind of my maintenance but around my wedding i did actually get them because I wanted them to be like absolutely A, like plus, plus, plus. So I did get them done for quite some time, like threaded by this amazing woman that I really trust. And she's actually stopped threading. She's like moved up within the company, doesn't do treatments anymore, which is a real shame because she's like amazing at it. But she really respected the brow. And 
I've kind of like followed what she's done a little bit more and if you do you know it's about just doing the brow you really like and want to celebrate you and your face what do you think Ludo he's just sniffing the lights he's like do you want to say hi? Oh, can you? You gonna say hi? He's sniffing y'all. <laughs> Too much? He's like, I don't want to be in front of the camera. That's your job. Well, there's my mad kit corner. So, yeah, there we go. Ludo. Staring at, like he's staring at me in the mirror. Oh, he's giving me a look. He's like, pay me some attention, mama. Please. Okay. He's a funny boy. So that's brows. Brows, brows, brows. Yeah, so I was like, no, I just do them myself. And it's really fun to do. Yeah, so at this point, you can do a couple of things to help keep the kind of hairs more in shape. Say when I'm working on a set, if we're doing like e-com or something. So e-com is e-commerce where you're like working with a brand and there's clothing, there's a lot of changes of clothing. Obviously that will affect the brow. So you really want them to stay in place. So you can use a bit of hairspray on a spoolie or just a really good brow product. Like I've got quite a few different brow products I like to do. Like I love the silk brows, really strong. What do you think of it, Lily? Do you like it? He's looking at it like... Do they use that on me? Well, I won't. Then there's the Refi. So I'm actually going to use a bit of the Refi now. I feel like I need to replace this product. I feel like it gets to a certain point where it's not as peak as it used to be. And this you just gently pop through like so. I'm really following the direction of the brow and then what I'm going to do to neaten that top line because I've brushed to the shape that they naturally grow is just like tickle that to kind of sharpen that top edge so it just again it's about refining There we go. You happy, Lulu Bear? All finished. Voila. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fun to create. Something just geeking out on one thing. Let me know what other areas you'd like me to geek out on, and because we can totally do that. I'm gonna do anything for you. The cat's jumping off the box there. He's like, I'm out of here. He's, he's been sat on a very exciting PR box that's just arrived. I'll show you, but I'm not going to show you what's in it yet. Kimberly, you'll be watching this and I know you'll be very excited about that. Um, follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok for more TikTok. TikTok too! TikTok for more regular content and stuff. And I will see you next week. Any comments, let's chat. You know I love a chat with you. Put it all below and we'll talk soon. Bye, thanks for watching.